All right. So I'm gonna, here's the second half of the scripting I did today. Uh, it'll be a quick, quickish video just to show you some other thing, cool things you can do with the scripting once you have it. So earlier today, you know, we built this dynamic scripting and it's based off these white variables. It auto calculates the red. So, um, we demonstrated that it works. Um, but I noticed right away that these were variables I, I cared about and I and I found myself flipping back and forth between workspaces and while it's easy it was kind of a pain so I thought why don't I move those over and and do it well as you can see my my workspace is pretty full already so it looked cluttered but I came up with a solution and and I will show you that right now so right now the brew system is shut down um, it's a two-part process to start my brewing system and uh, it's because so no one can walk in off the street namely my children and just start hitting buttons and and accidentally start brewing and do some damage so it's a two-step process the first step is enable brewing uh, once this says brewing enabled there's a countdown that happens and no matter how many times you click this brew start until it says it's ready to brew it will do nothing so once it's ready to brew then you have another countdown that if you don't click brew start it's just going to shut down so you've got to have the right process so we're going to click brew start um, once we do that it's going to tell us to input our recipe parameters well we know from before uh, these white ones are kind of the hard-coded ones and when you change these it changes the dynamic ones so let's say we have a 5.5 gallon brew with 13.5 pounds of grain. Everything else looks good. Here's our auto calculated variables. No problem. Well, during brew day, you know, as this thing is getting full and moving liquid, you'll want to know these parameters instead of going back and forth. So, um, anyways, this is also a two part process and it's a two part process for the purpose of not being able to forget something. So these parameters right here are based off of this button. So that means if I just set these and I forgot to set my mash temps and times and hops, it would just skate right through the brew session. But the reason I have two is so I can do this one and click OK, and then make sure these are implemented and click OK. So it's more of a safeguard to myself to not forget anything. So once these are fine, we click bring parameters. So those are locked in. Um, now a change here doesn't populate. Now these look good, hop times and mash times. So now I'm gonna click recipe input. Once that's put in, now you'll see a parameters accepted. Once the parameters are accepted, magic, all these uh, neon yellow parameters are now visible on this screen. These are the same auto calculated variables from here, but now they're here on my home screen as it were. So I can see them at a quick glance and know how much water, how much wort needs to go where. And, um, then when we're done with them, we can shut them down. So how we shut them down is, at the end of brew day, as the script progresses, it'll shut it down, but we'll force it. So right now we're gonna pause the script. You can see it was um, purging lines right now. We're gonna pause that. We're gonna go, go down to the bottom where the shutdown starts. And we're gonna set our script here. Once it's there and allows me to resume, I'm gonna click resume, and then you'll see uh, all the the stuff that's turned on shut off and you'll see these auto hide so I have that option so now I'm gonna click resume everything's off everything's hidden now all I have to do is click brew end and when I click brew end it's gonna shut everything down and go back to disabled so now we are shut down and we would have to repeat the enable brewing in that process to make it work so uh, pretty straightforward but pretty neat that you can unclutter your, your space with just some easy scripting.